What's up everybody, Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Today I'm going to be showing off a cool new rogue deck that centers around Tangrowth from Cosmic Eclipse. Originally saw this deck posted by Eric Smith from Rare Candy. This list is very similar to his original list that he used to finish second place at a League Cup with. I also saw a list posted by Azul and took some notes from that as well. This deck is a ton of fun to play and I've been doing really well with it on stream. If you haven't checked me out on Twitch already, make sure to drop the channel a follow. Twitch.tv slash Tricky Jam. We stream every single weekday. It's a ton of fun. Thank you to everybody who's already checked out the Twitch channel. This deck rocks though. Use Grass Knot for just one Grass Energy. It does 10 damage plus 30 more for each colorless in your opponent's active Pokemon's retreat cost. A lot of the tag team Pokemon in the current metagame have, have a retreat of three, meaning that Grass Knot is going to deal 100 damage to them base for just one energy. But the deck also plays for Absol, and Absol's Dark Ambition ability raises the retreat cost of basic Pokemon by one. So with four Absol, in the deck. You could potentially boost Tangros Grass Knot by 120 damage. And if it's already doing a base 100 to a Pokemon that has a retreat of 3, then you're going to be dealing 220 damage to the likes of Garchomp and Giratina Tag Team GX, Arceus Dalga and Palkia GX, as well as Lucario and Melmetal GX. So a very hard-hitting deck. We also have Shrine of Punishment to further punish those Tag Team Pokemon GX, taking damage between turns. And Mew from Unbroken Bonds can get in there with Psy power, also the bench barrier ability, very effective. Mimikyu is a cool addition to this deck as well, since it turns off Pokemon GX's abilities when they have damage counters on them, pairs perfectly with Shrine of Punishment, and really helps out against Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX decks. And there is, of course, the Feromosa and Buzzwool Tag Team GX. We don't really have a GX attacker in the deck other than our Buzzwool and Feromosa Tag Team GX. Beast Game GX can finish off Tag Team Pokemon after our Tangrowth has already weakened them for surprise knockouts and four prizes, right? So if you've already used Shrine Tangro to weaken up Tag Team Pokemon, Beast Game GX can finish things without your opponent may, uh, necessarily seeing it coming. And then the Heracross is a really cool addition that I saw in Azul's version of the deck. Turn the tables GX. If one of your opponent's Pokemon used a GX attack during their last turn, your opponent shuffles their active Pokemon all cards attacked attached to it into the deck. This is really good against Arceus, Dalga, and Palkia since they're going to go up and try to use their Altered Creation GX, and this deck doesn't have a great answer to that other than Heracross, who could really set the opponent behind by shuffling the Arceus, Dalga, Palkia all the way back into the deck. So the deck is a ton of fun, and I'm excited to show it off in some gameplays. Hopefully we can win. <laughs> One of the coolest things about this deck is that it's pretty cheap and affordable to build. If you're looking for codes to bolster your collection on PTCGO, make sure to check out FullGripCodes.com. Big shout out to everybody who has already scoped out our instant email delivery code website. I do my best to make sure that the website is always up to date with the newest standard codes. We have all of them for 45 cents or less on the website right now. So it's a great time to pick up your Cosmic Eclipse codes and things like that on FullGripCodes.com. And this starting hand's not bad. We're going to start with, I think, the Mew. And then we have two Absols as well. Absol, not only great for boosting your damage output with the Tangrowth, but also fantastic for really disrupting your opponent. The, uh, you know, the Retreat Clause on Absol is very good. And it looks like we might be playing against a Pidgeotto Control deck. So I'm not exactly sure how this matchup goes, but we could get in there with Buzzmosa if they do not have a Mew to protect the bench. And that could be very disruptive uh, as far as just knocking out the Pidgeys very quickly and efficiently. So I think I'm gonna start off by just playing a bunch of cards down and seeing what my opponent has. I'm not gonna put the Buzzmosa down right away because it might not be it might not be that a Pidgeotto control deck. It could always be Blacephalon or something like that. So I'm just going to toss these cards down real quick. And I think no harm in putting a Jirachi down either, since that's not going to be a target for my opponent to stall. And we'll just start off with a Cynthia. Mew is actually a great starter if this does happen to be a Pidgeotto control deck. And I'm a little bit wary of just slapping down the Tangela because if I put a Tangela down, I think that could be 
something that my opponent tries to take advantage. In fact, I got the beast energy already in my hand, so I think that we are just going to pass with this hand, and then I'm going to feel out and see what my opponent is playing first before I bench anything that has a serious retreat cost. I really like the Absols against this deck as well because it stops them from easily pivoting with Jirachi into a, um, you know, into something more harmful like an Oranguru. But it looks like I am playing against Baby Blacephalon with the Pidgeotto, so that's totally fine actually. And I can use Psy Power to soften up one of these Pidgeys and then Psy Power again to knock it out when it turns into a Pidgeotto and then just build up Tangrowth in the background. I only have four Tangrowths to attack with, so I really don't mind getting the first knockout with a Mew because it just uh, helps preserve my attackers, if that makes any sense. And this Absol hopefully will allow us to be just a little bit disruptive against what my opponent is trying to do here. Now, we could just go all in with the Blacephalon, or not the Blacephalon, we go all in with the, uh, you know, the Buzzmosa this turn. That does not seem optimal, but uh, we will drag it out of the deck, though, just to have it here. And we have a Ditto Prism Star. We also have ourselves a Netball, so I can get myself a Tangela. We know we want that. And I have a Grass Energy as well, so we could just use the Grass Energy for the Mew and Psy Power. Uh, Pidgey on the bench. That seems fine. The Ditto Prism Star. We could just slap that down as well since we're probably going to be trading. And then, I mean, I'm just thinking about the Buzzmosa. <laughs> it's a, definitely an all in play if I just Beast Game GX for two prizes right off rip. But I don't think that I am going to be necessarily able to get my third prize out of the Buzzmosa. It's a little bit sketch. I mean, if they just bring up this thing and they have it like that, then they have it like that. But Beast Game GX for two prizes right off the bat, it's pretty good. I, uh, I'm i definitely tempted, but I think we'll save it. And we're just going to go here and we're going to side power. Just a little bit more of a conservative play. If they come up instantly with the Blacephalon and just punished my Buzzmosa, that would feel so bad. I don't necessarily have a ton of switch options on the deck either. We play three copies of switch, which does help with mobility, but yeah, not uh, not great. If this thing's on the bench, that's just a three prize liability at all times in the match. And I've definitely seen these uh, Baby Bliss Ephelon decks really tee off. Now, something cool that we can do potentially is maybe finish this off. If my Mew does get knocked out, maybe we can Jet Punch or something like that later in the game and finish off the Pidgey that we kind of started on there. I think we're just hoping that they don't get an attack though and that we get to side power the Pidgey and then we're gonna just try and trade the Tangros one for one. But they do have the Welder Double Fire. So the question is, do they have uh, a switch, an escape board or something like that? Escape board is usually what they use. However, the escape board's not gonna give them free retreat they have two Absols in play, so they also have to evolve into a Pidgeotto. The Pidgeotto not affected by Absol, so that is a little bit annoying and does decrease the effectiveness of the deck sometimes. When you're playing against evolutions, it can be really hard to deal the numbers that you need to deal with your Tangrowth since Absol's Dark Ambition only affects basic Pokemon. That being said, there are a ton of basic Pokemon in standard format that are big threats, which is how this deck really shines so let's see do they get the escape board already they have the fiery flint they've got plenty of fire energy in their hands to take a knockout do they have the escape board as well i'm really happy now that i did not go in with the buzzmosa they uh they definitely got it so they are real setup they do have the fire energy to just retreat so that's fine Pidgeotto not affected by Absol. And they're just going to Fireball Circus from you. That's a feel bad, but it's cool. We'll trade a little bit with our Tangros at this point and hope that we can outlast them. I have Rosa, so I am going to be able to get what I need. I have Switch. I feel like I'm going to save the Switch, not necessarily going to. Ah, well, we'll go here. 
And then I can Stellar Wish and then Rosa. And I have the switch just to get out of it. So that's great. I don't need to use my Pokecom there. We're going to go all in, bench that Ditto Prism Star. And we're all in on the Tangrowth strategy at this point. And then we've got Reset Stamp, which will be good eventually. And Cynthia will also be good eventually, since I can Rosa this turn and just start to set up my board. And then eventually we will need to refresh our hand. So I do like the Cynthia. It's not time to Reset Stamp yet. And we'll Rosa. Get ourselves probably just a couple Grass Energies. Another Tangrowth. I mean, I kind of also just like getting... Um, a counter stadium because I mean sometimes one of the hardest parts about the Blacephalon deck is just chaining Blacephalons if I just keep that out for them they will be able to just really take advantage of that so probably just going to pop that down to try and disrupt them a little bit we got our Tang Growth here we'll have that one for next turn they don't usually play reset stamp so that's fine and then next turn we are going to go in with, let's see, I'm going to get myself another Tangle out as well. Or let's see, I mean, I'm doing enough damage, right? They've got one, two, three, four, four times three, 120. Yes, I'm doing just enough damage. So we can get ourselves a Tangle. Start to set that up. And it's off to the races now at this point. So we're just trying to trade back and forth with our non-GX Pokemon. They did get the first knockouts, but I got the first meaningful knockout. They only play four Blacephalon. I only play four Tangrowth. So as far as this trade goes back and forth, I do have the ability to attack with five Tangrowth if it comes down to it. I can uh, use my Lana's Fishing Rod to toss the Tangrowth back into the deck and evolve up this Ditto Prism Star to get a fifth Tangrowth. So that is a cool thing about trading in this matchup as well, that I do have five attackers. And then since I did already soften up this Pidgey, I could sneak in there for game with my Buzzmosa, even if there is something like a Blacephalon or a Victini Prism Star in the active. And if I've run out of Tangrowth, I can use Jet Punch and take out this Pidgey there also at some point if i had like two prizes remaining and they have to promote something like a jirachi or a pidgey if they don't necessarily have what they need in order to attack i can also just beast game gx for game there at the end so that's kind of what i'm thinking as far as my long-term strategy goes they do have five attackers and six if they play the heatran gx i really do like the heatran gx in this deck and I think that it, uh, it just smooths the whole deck out a lot and gives you that extra attacker. Uh, sometimes you're playing against a non-GX deck and you need six attackers. Having only five attackers really limits you as far as being able to trade um, you know, hit for hit with a non-GX deck, especially if you prize one or something like that. I mean, that's kind of my concern with the Tangros right now as well, that I might have one in my five prize cards, which would uh, certainly inhibit my ability to win. So we'll see here. Uh, we gotta just promote this Tangela and go for it with the grass energy. I only have beast energy in my hands. That is uh, unfortunate. Didn't know I was about to top deck that escape board, but you know, there we go. And I'll Cynthia for six, looking for a netball or a grass would be great. Looks like we got the grass and a switch, which is good. So I will take it. I think it's good to just switch into the Jirachi as well and Stellar Wish while I've got it, just to increase the amount of options that I have. We can Pokemon Communication. I can also just Lana's Fishing Rod now since I have it, toss the Tangrowth back into the deck. I feel like Pokemon Communication guarantees me an attack for next turn as well though. So. I do like that. It also thins this hand down since it is a little bit jammed with Pokemon. And it looks like I might be using Lily this next turn. So we're just going to evolve up both of these Tangros while we can. And then Grass Knot for Knockout. See if they can't stream another attacker. Now, as we thought, yeah, they did not get their Stadium down. So they might have trouble finding another Blacephalon this next turn. Which is our hope. Fingers crossed. And they might miss a turn of attacking since they are technically in the lead. They took the first knockouts. They are 
going to be in an advantage as far as the trade goes, and I do need them to miss a beat somewhere along the line in order to skip back ahead. They got a couple of airmails, still haven't evolved up this one. They'll probably find it this turn, because I doubt they prized two Pidgeotos in their final four prizes. There's the Ultra Space that they so desperately need to pull out that third baby Blacephalon, and here's to hoping that there might be you know, Blacephalon number four in the bottom four prizes for them so that they can't stream them turn after turn. And there, that Pidgeotto is getting evolved too. Next turn, I have this Tangrowth built up. I do need to find myself another Tangela. The Rosa is great in this deck because it's just going to guarantee all the pieces that I need to stream Tangrowth back to back to back. The Netballs are super valuable in this deck as well. One of the main reasons that non-GX decks don't typically work in our standard format is because they don't have the Bolt Search option to be able to allow them to consistently get their attackers streamed. So... With Netball, not only can you have Instant Search for your Tanglas, but you have Instant Search for Grass Energy as well, and it's Free Search, which is even better. They don't have the Welder, so this is the turn that I needed in order to be able to uh, swing this match. Now, they do have Pidgeotto in the active position this turn, which is bad because I can't do much to it with my Tangrowth, guys. That's just how it goes. He's got a retreat of one, Tangrowth does 40 to it. That is bad. So they do have time uh, available to them. So let's switch into the Jirachi. And then, do I wanna bench this Absol? This is just a pain. I think we're going to Stellar Wish, see what we can find. We've got a Pokemon Communication, and we've got a Reset Stamp. Uh, I think Reset Stamp could be good. Now limit them to a four-card hand, and maybe they don't draw too much out of it. I think Stamp's probably better at the end of the game, though. Uh, Pokemon Communication, also valuable. And at this point, uh, it's tough. Like At this point, finding the Mew would also be very good if I could Lana's Fishing Rod. Toss the Mew back in. Just unfortunate. I think I want to go for the Marshadow. Maybe I do hit the Lana's Fishing Rod. Except there's no Pokemon communication in the deck left. So, like, just a tough call. I feel like I'm just going to get the Marshadow just to remove that stadium. And then Lily. I think no matter what I do, I don't want to leave this Tangrowth in the active. Something that Azul was playing in his list was he played the Fion, and the Fion can push another Pokemon into the active position. The Fion here wouldn't really help. They would just send up one of their other Pidgeotos, which would probably be fine. And we have got this like weird jammed hand. So I think I just want to uh, pass, probably. Yep, so I think we're just going to pass with the Jirachi active and just wait our turn. I could go for, yeah, I mean, Beast Game GX. I need to take another prize before I could Beast Game GX. I can't just, um, yeah, here I can't just go for Beast Game GX because that would go to two prizes remaining. They would bring up the Blacephalon and knock it out and go to one prize remaining, and then they win the game. So if I had three prizes remaining, then Beast Game GX would be an option for me. But it is not right now. So this is this is tough, yes. Tangrowth not doing enough damage to Pidgey. This is the kind of situation for sure that you can get stuck in with your Tangrowth where you really just want to hit big tag team Pokemon or basic Pokemon. Those are the only things that Tangrowth really hits well. Everything else can be a struggle since we don't necessarily have the best tools to attack into them. I've even run into troubles with things like Naganadels in Blacephalon decks. If it's just a field of Naganadels, Tangrowth doesn't really deal with that all too well, especially since uh, Naganadel has only got a retreat of one. So maybe they didn't find the Welder. They got the Welder right there. And they're going to be bringing up their Victini Prism Star, it looks like, to take a knockout this turn. That's fine with me. I mean, it's kind of like a, a free knockout. Jirachi is, does not have a lot of hit points, and they're going to throw all the 
Oh, no, they've got custom catchers in their Blacephalon deck. That is not something that I was anticipating. So at this point, I'm starting to wonder if it's even possible for me to be able to win the game. Uh, I have two Tangros left. I have this one and one more. And I have a Mew that I could Fishing Rod back into the deck and take out that Pidgeotto. But at this point, they have definitely uh, been able to skip back ahead by custom catching my Tangrowth, which is like big struggle there. Cool. We'll send out the Jirachi and see what we can do with the Heat Factory out as well. It's like, okay, not the, uh, not the best. Wool, Netball, I got to get myself the Tangla or the Grass Energy. I mean, we're going to be able to get that with Rosa anyway, so that's fine. We're going to get the Tangla. And then Rosa, I can get myself the Tangrowth for next turn. I can get myself Reset Stamp and another Energy out of the deck so that I can, yeah, stream some things. That's cool. I think I do have one more reset stamp in the deck. So we're going to try and stamp back to back turns. Stellar Wish. At this point, yeah, the, the Alana's Fishing Rod for sure. So we could take out. Yeah, so we're going to put the Mew back into the deck. I can finish what I started there on that other Pidgeotto. And we've got this. Stamped three. Knock out Victini. Seems okay. I mean, they're definitely going to be able to take this knockout on this Tangrowth. The hope is that maybe in the next couple turns we are able to eventually find what we need to limit their hand and keep them from getting a final knockout. Like they have Blacephalon here, but maybe they can't build up that final Blacephalon. They have a deck full of fire energy at this point. So it might be kind of difficult for them to navigate since their deck is kind of flooded with fire at this point. I think that the ideal play next turn would be to knock out the Pidgeotto with the Mew that I just put back into the deck and then stamp to two and hope that they could not do anything about it. But... I do put myself in a situation where I could potentially win with Beast Game GX if they try to pull that Pidgeotto thing on me again where they just leave a Pidgeotto in the active uh, and try to buy another turn or something. They can't do that too many more times because if I take a knockout this next turn, then I'm in you know, a situation where I potentially win the game with the Beast Game GX the following turn. So I would love to be able to do something like that. This hand is jammed with lilies though. I think I have used the only roses in my deck. I have two Cynthia's in the discard pile. And Lily is looking like the only draw supporter that I have available to me. The only other option is maybe I Stellar Wish into a Cynthia and then find everything that I need off the Cynthia draw. I do have the Tangrowth Grass in my hand, though. That's good. And, you know, at least I'm going to be able to take them, force them down to the final prize. And so long as they don't build up a second Blacephalon on their bench with Welder, then I still have a shot to potentially win this game. I do want to find Shrine, though, to bump this Heat Factory, especially if I'm going to stamp again, because that, uh, that Heat Factory is going to allow them to see a ton more cards than they would be seeing otherwise. This is my last Tangrowth, though. There is not another Tangrowth that I can build up at all. No, and I've already used my Alana's Fishing Rod. Yes, that is Tangla number four, right? One, two, yes, three. Oh, well, there's another Tangla at large, but I did not Fishing Rod the Tangrowth back into the deck, so it doesn't matter. And I'm out of Tanglas in the deck, so there must be one prized, which is all well and good. They did not Welder to and build up another Blacephalon, so this means that I do have a chance if my draws go just right. We'll see what we can do. Jirachi going up. We got an escape board. That's cool. Definitely going to be Stellar Wish hours. Boy, what a whiff. Okay. So, ain't nothing happening there. We've got this. I've got another Absaw, which is chill. They only got 12 cards left in deck. And I'm going to have to Lily for... 
an unfortunate, unfortunately small amount. We've got another there, and then can I bench this hair across? No, we're assuming that they're going to knock out my tang growth, so I cannot bench the thing there. We've got the beast energy, um, and a great catcher. A great catcher cannot bring up anything, so that is unfortunate. We just have to retreat here, and now we're like, we did not hit our stamp. We're seeing that it just would be very valuable if I did have a Fion in the deck. I could potentially win the game if Fion was at our disposal. There's a Cynthia for next turn. With Fion in the deck, I could potentially do something where I push up one of these Pidgeotos. Maybe they only have one Blacephalon left. Uh, we push up a Pidgeotto on the bench and then Beast Game G exit or something like that. This does seem like it is going to be bad, though. Even if I stamp to one, I mean, they've got Heat Factory. They've got all these Pidgeotos. How could they possibly whiff an attack? They're down three Welders. If they have a Welder in the prizes, potentially we can get there. Uh, if their Welder is in the bottom eight cards of their deck, we can potentially get there. But they're going to get to Heat Factory, too. They are down 10 fire, so it is quite a bit, but not too many. They should be fine. Let's see. The best play for me would be if they just don't happen to have it. They're looking with Poke Gear. Lecture is what they grab. Interesting. I imagine that they will they had to have seen their entire deck there between the air mails and that gear. So either the welder's in their hand or it is in the bottom two cards of the deck. So we'll see. Or in the bottom two prizes. That would be devastating. They're going for lecture, so they don't have it this turn. Meaning that they cannot promote that Blacephalon or I will knock it out with Tangrove. So they have to pass. I have a shot to win. I just need, no, I need a switch. I need a lot. I need a switch, and I need either my Mew to knock out the Pidgeotto would be really good. Oh, I need a lot. Okay. Uh, I think we have to Cynthia for six. I hate that that makes my hand smaller, but if there's a switch in the deck, we could use it to not hit any of the things that we needed. So I have to grasp not. All my switches are in the discard pile at this point. That's brutal. I can't bump that. And then I think I have to Grass Knot. Um, and I have to attach here in case I have to slam. Because it's possible that they uh, they do not have Welder next turn either. The Welder just could be here in the bottom two, car in the bottom two prizes. Um, they had to have seen the entire deck last turn. That makes me think that the welder is prized, and that I am going to end up trying to slam one of these Pidgeotos <laughs> for knockout since I don't have a switch available to me. And, I mean, we would just have to flip ahead. They only have three cards left in deck. They, with the, all the air mails, they're seeing every single card in their deck and at least selecting from them. I would be super tilted if they pump fake me with the welder this turn because they didn't have it last turn. They saw the whole deck last turn. So they definitely, they ain't got it. It's prized. Three welders down, manual attachment, and I think they're going to pass with the Pidgeotto active or something like that. They can't retreat into a different Pidgeotto. Yes, yes, yes. So then we just need to Lily into an energy. I should have four, five, six. Oh my gosh, it's just beast energy left. Beast energy is the only energy in my deck. So, I will just run out of energy and not be able to win this game. Five, six. No, I think I have, uh, I have one grass left. Okay, so I can bench this Mew, and I can Lily. I have one grass, one beast left. There's the grass. I can use the beast literally on Mew if I have to. And we're going for slam. I need one heads. Let's go! 80 damage. The Pidgeotto's knocked out. Crazy. 
Tangrowth getting in there with the body slam. And then I just need to find my final energy to snipe that with Mew for game, assuming that they bring up Lacephalon, knock out my Tangrowth. And we, you know, I got eight cards in the bottom of my deck. It's not going to be the e easiest to thin this deck down. And I also cannot use the Netball to search out the energy. I would love to find a Cynthia to shuffle draw six to see if I could draw into the beast that way. The Great Catcher, usually good for paring down your hand, but in a situation like this, it's not quite as useful. So let's see what they've got. They have to have the fire energy and are able to knock out my Tangrowth, but they have to be scared of the Mew here. And as you can see, ooh, they play Heatran. So is, is Heat Dog going to be bringing these energies to him, making it a little bit harder for me to take game, I guess? I mean, not really. It's, really, it's the same thing. Either way, even if they retreat into the Heatran, he's going to be taking Shrine Ticks, but doesn't really matter. And then for us, we're, tr we're trying to Lily into Beast to attach to the Mew. And it's funny that you can you can attach the Beast energy to Mew if you need to. Uh, we also could theoretically, you know, Netball for the Buzzwool GX and then just use Beast energy to snipe the Pidgeotto. Either way, we get there. So I think I probably will get the Netball out of the deck. And they're telling me well played. I mean, oh, it's not that straightforward here. We need to find the energy. So we'll see what we can do. Uh, we can netball once, take a look at that deck. There's the Buzzmosa, there's the Beast. There is a Cynthia in deck. So I think that we are gonna grab the Buzzmosa to thin the deck, right? And then I'll bench it, I guess. Ah, that, that could be incorrect. Yeah, because if I don't find the Cynthia here. Oh, we do find the Cynthia. All right, that gives me the highest chance possible of being able to find the energy. So I'm going to thin all these other cards down. And unfortunately, I cannot Great Catcher because the only GX in play is in the active. I mean, technically, eh, it doesn't matter. We're just going to shuffle draw six and hope I hit it. Yeah. I would love to win with Jet Punch. Odds are we hit it, and there it is. Excellent. So we're going to go here and just jet punch the Pidgeotto for game because I want to use the Buzzmosa. So there we go. Jet punch, Pidgeotto, GG's, baby Blacephalon. Crazy game for sure. Well played, Pokedead GX. So that was fun. Uh, definitely drama-filled, as have been most of my games with the Tangela deck. We'll run it back and play one more and see how this next one goes. Maybe we get to play against a tag team Pokemon GX this time and not have a super stressful non-GX match back and forth. Looks like my opponent's playing some sort of fighting deck with grass Pokemon and Dragon Neal EX. This actually could be a Tangrowth deck as well. Uh, there's grass, there's fighting, you know, if it's uh, Tangrowth with the Heracross in it, then I have no idea how the mirror goes. It should be probably horrendous as Tangros are just using Grass Knot on each other. I guess it, no, it's Grass Knot for 100. You still swing for 100, but you can't boost it at all. So it seems kind of bad. And it looks like I'm going second. I can side power turn one again. They are playing Lucario Melmetal. So this matchup is sketch but it is what i asked for it's tag team pokemon with three retreat costs so hopefully we can get in there and hit this thing for big numbers with our big green spaghetti you know guys i guess i don't know what what is a tangro vine creature uh my favorite thing about tangla is that it's got red shoes that is one of my biggest regrets about tangrowth is that he's got no shoes. Tangla loves those little red booties. I don't know if you've ever taken a look. When I see Tangla, I'll show you guys the little red shoes I'm talking about. Tangla's got some style and uh, and loves the boots. Tangrowth has just got, you know, what are these? Those are like hooves. Why does Tangrowth have hooves and not shoes like Tangla? I don't know. Here's Tangla, though. I will show you Tangla's shoes. Look at those wonderful red shoes. Gotta love that. So we're going to get Tangla 1 
and probably Tangela 2 out of the deck with our net balls. And then I can place three damage counters with the active Mew. That seems fine. Probably not going to be using Buzzmosa really in this match. So I think the beast energy here is not going to be terribly missed. And yeah, we'll just do that. Three damage counters, four there. And we're starting to soften up the Lucario Melmetal already. Even if they get a turn to Steel Fist or something like that, they're still not knocking out the Mew. Uh, I do imagine that they'll probably use Full Metal Wall GX, though, and just remove my energy altogether, which is mildly annoying, but still, they won't be knocking me out. So that's fine. I do have to wait for them to take a knockout in order for me to use Rosa and really get this deck working. But with a three retreat to work off of, we have a pretty favorable matchup here. The sketchiest thing can be, yo, they didn't use the GX. Big thumbs up from me. Um, the sketchiest thing in this matchup for sure is if they get the Omastar out. If they get the Omastar out into play, I'm always gonna have a bigger bench than them. And being item locked, not fun. It's not super great for me. So let's, let us see. I think I'll just keep the Marsh Shadow in my hand in case I top deck something like a Pokemon Communication. And yeah, the Grass Energy being placed is fine as well. We're just going to side power. Looks like they're going to be taking a knockout on my Mew this next turn. They're not really trying to deal with uh, the Mew apparently using Psy power every turn. So they have kind of been aggressing towards that with their Lucario Melmetal. Um, again, the Steel Fist. And then they'll be able to use a quick Heavy Impact for 150 damage, and they do one hit KO my Tangrowth, but Tangrowth has an attack that ramps up really quick against Lucario Melmetal, even if it's taking minus 60 damage. Oh, there's great potions in this deck. Uh, I was not anticipating the great potions. Yes, Malachi Sparks, second place. Regional Championship Lucario Melmetal deck did not play great potions, so that's a little bit of a curveball, but I still think we're doing okay even though most of my damage just got erased. Rosa will allow me to go get some more Pokemon. And hopefully, yeah, another draw supporter. Yeah, we're, we're chilling for sure. Our attack does ramp up very quick against this Lucario Melmetal, though. Uh, we deal uh, 120 base, what is it, 100, 100 base damage? Yeah, 100 base damage with the three retreat. And then if I boost it by, you know, three more Absols, that's base 190 for one energy. Even if they're decreasing it by 60 damage with the GX attack and a, and a frying pan, then we're doing base 130, um, which uh, two hit KOs the Lucario Metal. So the math really checks out in this matchup and it's not terribly bad to work with. I think we're gonna get an Absol just to boost that damage and we're gonna get grass energy as well as a Cynthia. We need to just draw cards. Now, using Cynthia next turn and trying to just hit the Tangrowth does make me a little bit nervous, but sometimes you just gotta do it. That's just uh, the way she goes. I mean, I could have just gotten a Tangrowth instead, but I wanna do more damage, so we're doing that. And I'm not gonna great catch her away the final cards in my hand. Still swinging for 100 damage. So next turn, if they don't heal, I could hit theoretically for enough if I really Cynthia into like everything I need. If we Cynthia into Shrine, Tangrowth, and two Absols. That's four out of six cards need to be exactly what the doctor ordered. Then we could take a knockout this next turn. So they got Cynthia and Caitlyn. Oh yeah, but the Great Potions. Like if they just use another great potion or two here, then this matchup could go south real quick if they have enough great potions. Usually with this deck having to rely on Mallow and Lana, it's uh, much more difficult for them to heal because they have to pivot between Lucario and Melmetals, which is not the easiest thing to do. They have a very high retreat cost. It just doesn't happen all the time. So let's see what we can get with this Cynthia. I mean, we are asking for a lot. Hoping for top deck Pokecon. That would be cool. Did not. I'll bench the Jirachi though and just feel like I want to thin the deck. So we're just going to bench the Marshadow and probably bump the Power Plant this turn. Okay. 
So I've got Pokecom, I can get a Tangela, I've got Netball, I can get myself... That's not bad. It's not the worst. I mean, at least we get to attack, right? Like, I didn't miss the attack, so that's good. We're celebrating. We're going to switch into Jirachi, and then I think I'm using Netball to get myself another Tangela, because we need to do that to continue putting this pressure on. And if we get that... Yeah, we're going to thin the deck, get a Tangela. We're going to see what we get with the Jirachis as well. Stellar Wish. We'll take the Lily. would like to have a draw card next turn. Could also Stamp. I mean, Stamp. And then just say, you know what? I'm to totes hitting myself a draw card off this next Stellar Wish. I think that's actually where I want to go. Because their hand is gigantic. And I know that they got the greens in their hand. So I think we just... Shuffle to four, Pokecon and the Mimikyu out for a Tangrowth. For Tangrowth. There he is. We got two Tangrowths left in deck. Not a lot. Not a whole lot. And I bench the Tangla, and then... Yeah, I mean, that, that Marshadow, he ain't doing anything. I don't want to play down to a zero card hand, though. You never just want to show your opponent what that last card is. I'm going to Grass Knot. Still a little bit short. It hurts. If I just had, you know, 40 more damage there, another Absol, a Shrine, two more Absols, then we would be in there. They do have the greens. So let's see what they do. They can heal. Uh, they cannot heal enough to keep me from knocking out the Lucario Melmetal this next turn. What's troubling is that I only have one Tangrowth left in the deck. So we're hoping that I am able to rip one of these Tangros off of the prizes or something like that. Uh, it's looking like my Buzzmosa probably is not going to be doing a lot of damage. He only does like 20 with Beast Game GX. Green's for the switch and the Fiery Flint. So maybe they're switching this thing to the bench, never to be seen again. And I'm going to take this opportunity to Full Metal Wall GX. I actually kind of needed that. I am very thankful for the Full Metal Wall GX turn. That's fine. And that's why we didn't play that Grass Energy, folks. Because you, you never know uh, when you might need it. So we're going to start slugging away. 70 damage. And they probably have Welder Double Fire and will knock out my Tangrowth this turn. At this point, we are down 2. Grass Energy is about to be 3. And they're going to tag call for the Mallow and Lana. And Cynthia and Caitlyn. This is looking like it could be very problematic. They are setting up very well versus me. Multiple Lucario and Mel Metals in the mix. We had a little bit of a tough start. You really want there to be like three Absols out at all times versus decks like this. So that you're just dealing that maximum damage output numbers. But really been kind of stretching just to put together my attacks so far. Um, and trying to put forth pressure. I didn't really have anybody else that I could have swung into the active early. It's like I didn't find the Jirachi until just this turn. So at least they don't have Omastar out. I mean, that's a, that's a major plus. And we're going to Stellar Wish, and hopefully we just find the absolute gas. We got Rosa. Hmm. We got a Pokemon Energy. I mean, I'll Stellar Wish first, and we're going to see. We got Lily and a Skateboard. A switch. So Rosa could get me a knockout on this one. Um but they have three prizes left. I mean, knocking out the other one is good because then they can't use things like So we Rosa I think we just take a card that I don't necessarily need. And we can Rosa get ourselves a Tangrowth. I'm going to be missing a turn of attacking. But it feels necessary. I think we can Great Catcher up the Lucario Melmetal. I mean, because they're about to just start healing, and it's going to be kind of gnarly. So we could take this out with our Tangrowth. We just got to deal 40 damage. We're dealing more than that. So 
70, in fact. <laughs> and then next turn, I mean, we're going to need a big turn coming up. And we got the Tangela there. I need to find a Tangrowth 2. Because there is no more Tangrowth left in my deck. This is the last one. So I have one that is prized. And I could use Lana's Fishing Rod to chuck Tangrowth back in. So if they hit here, I could Toxic, which is cool, you know, potentially with the Tangela this turn, and maybe put them in a weird spot where they're just taking a lot of residual damage. Uh, maybe Toxic and, like, and then try to stamp them to 2 or 1 or so. Something like that. I think that's probably what we need. Now, Grass Energies were also very big pulls for us off of that because I was very low on grass energy, too. So that was helpful. Here's another Absol. We got a Stether Wish. Give me a supporter, please. Lily, I'll take it. It's going to refill my hand. Excellent. And then we want to find Reset Stamp if we can. And Toxic seems like the play. But then I need to find Ditto Prism Star. Yeah, it's like we might as well. I need to find Ditto Prism Star, and I need to find Reset Stamp off this Lily for five. Let's go. We did not get there. So I don't think that there's any way to stop them from just absolutely housing this next turn. I think I do need to, I mean, I need to just go up and Toxic for sure, though. And then, oh, well, my wasn't trying to put him down, but it looks like he's he's going down. That's fine. We're going to Toxic. Now, they could heal with, like, their guy, you know, the, the greens or whatever. And then I think my hope is that this thing just stays poisoned. It could get a couple of great potions and just, like, heal and then knock out this. And then I need to buy a turn with Buzzmosa. I can do that, I guess, by, you know, netball, get the Buzzmosa. I can Jet Punch. Jet Punch doesn't do anything, though. So, really, he's just staying there. And then I need to find, like, Ditto. The only out that I would have to win is they would have to... I would have to find Ditto Prism Star. They'd have to not heal at all. And I have to find Ditto Prism Star off of this Cynthia next turn while promoting. Ah, oh, they, they don't heal. Interesting. Interesting. So I have a chance to not lose because I could promote the Buzzmosa and buy myself a turn while I bench the Ditto. And we have Ditto. Well, kind of. Okay. I think... What a netball. We're guaranteed putting the Buzzmosa into the active... How many netballs do I have left in deck? Probably zero. Yeah. So I just need to draw into the ditto naturally. That stinks. Because I need to promote this thing. So we're going to go here. And I have no way to heal it. Either. You feel me? <laughs> so that's just it. Uh, we might as well thin... By putting that there. I need to switch left in the deck so that I can switch my Buzzmosa back to the bench when it's time. We just have to Cynthia. I have to find Ditto. We've got Ditto. Okay, it's not bad. I would also like to stamp. <laughs> Please, I need to find the reset stamp. So we can go here. Because I don't think, I don't have a Tangrowth left in deck. So we have to hit the Lana's Fishing Rod, too. This is so stressful. What a stressful route. I have to hit the Lana's Fishing Rod to be able to chuck it back into the deck. But I also have to hit the Stamp this turn. We got the Lana's Fishing Rod, but we do not have... I could theoretically rip the Stamp if I trade for another Jirachi retreat. No, I can't put that down. Yep. So, I think it's just they're going to be able to double custom catch. Well, they might not play custom catchers. So, if they don't play custom catchers, then 
we might have a shot. I need to top deck some very good cards though. So, yeah, I, I don't think I don't think I can do it. But yeah, you know, we're gonna shoot our shot. I don't think the shrine makes any difference. You know, it certainly does not help them knock me out in one hit. They're not gonna be knocking me out in one hit. Beast game GX would deal no damage. So we will just jet punch for no damage. <laughs> they both deal no damage. So we just got our our Buzzmos out here chilling with an energy, not doing a whole lot. And they do play custom catchers. Did I know they play custom catchers? Had I seen the custom catchers? No, I had not seen the custom catchers. So that's going to be game. Unfortunate. Unfortunate ending to our Tangela video. But you know what? We did have some pretty fun games there, and this deck is definitely cool for a rogue deck. I highly suggest checking it out. Like I said, Eric Smith from Rare Candy played this deck to a second place League Cup finish, so pretty impressive. This list is very close to his. Uh, Zul has a list as well. I like this, though. I think the Beast Energy is neat just to give you an option to boost your Beast Game GX at the end. Uh, being able to hit 80 with Beast Game is really good. And I also really like the Heracross against Arceus Diagopalkia. That was an inclusion that I saw that Azul played. Other than that, Eric Candy's, uh, you know, Eric Candy's, Eric Candy's creation there. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Hopefully you like the Tangrowth deck. Let me know what you think of the deck in the comments below. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell. Check out FullGripGames.com. Supporting FullGripGames.com directly supports me, the channel, Tricky Jim, all of that. So thank you guys so much to everybody who shops and gets their trading card game singles at FullGripGames.com. Thank you guys so much for supporting FullGripCodes.com as well, where we have instant PTCGO code delivery. I'll catch you guys live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Tricky Jim, where I stream every single week. Make sure to drop the channel a follow, and I'll see you next time. Peace.